There is a lot of speculation that water and agriculture will not get, a, not get a look in in the forthcoming Copenhagen Climate Change Summit agenda. This will be a big mistake since water and agriculture will figure strongly in adapt adaptation responses and also have a role to play with respect to mitigation. It has been said that climate change mitigation is all about gases and adaptation all about water. Whilst this adage cannot be argued with, it may lead us to ignore the extent to which agriculture can contribute to mitigation as well as adaptation. Opportunities for adapt adaptation are well known and include improved drought and heat resistant plant varieties, more effective water systems management and irrigation technology, methods that help us adapt to more climate variability including more water storage, and more use of groundwater and managed aquifer recharge. With respect to greenhouse gas mitigation, there are several proven water management technologies, me technologies, methods and approaches that can be quite effective. We know, for example, that methane emissions can be reduced with dryland rice cultivation. We know that conservation tillage and land management practices that can reduce nitrous oxide emissions and we know that reducing subsidies on electricity to pump groundwater for irrigation can lower carbon dioxide emissions because electricity use is less. Despite the significant te technical potential for adaptation and mitigation in agriculture, there has been surprisingly little progress in implementing measures, especially among small farmers in developing countries. One reason for this is the lack of tangible incentives for small farmers to manage water more productively. We know incentives work. There are numerous schemes mooted for developed countries that pay cash to farmers for sequestering carbon, mitigating emissions of methane and changing land management practices. Sadly, there is not a lot of evidence today that international climate policy is having much impact on greenhouse gas emissions from agriculture. Similarly, there is not enough investment in schemes that help farmers adapt to climate change by improving water storage and using supplementary irrigation. These measures provide insurance against drought impacts and help increase food security and livelihoods. There are however some interesting trends that there is a, a growing amount of investment in these areas. On the mitigation side, market-based carbon trading schemes may offer prospects for farmers in developed and developing countries alike with a number of successful schemes operating in North America and a few bright spots starting to appear in South America, China and Eastern Europe. However, we need to look again at numerous other policies that affect greenhouse gas emissions from agriculture, including conventions on biodiversity, desertification and sustainable development. Beyond these, we need to look at macroeconomic policies, international trade agreements, energy policy and price adjustments and other environmental policies. Finally, we must move beyond the comfort zone of our own development world and start building bridges with the private sector entities who are demonstrating considerable imagination and leadership in ways and means of adapting agriculture to climate change and helping small farmers mitigate emissions of greenhouse gases. In agriculture, adaptations and adaptation and mitigation can and should go hand in hand. There are significant opportunities within agriculture to mitigate greenhouse gas emissions and, and I think it's possible that we could be doing more to capitalise on those opportunities. It will be a sad day if agriculture's role in climate change is overlooked in the forthcoming Copenhagen climate change meetings. What do you think? This is Colin Chartres at the International Water Management Institute.